Jesus, your Father, we are grateful to be gathered in this place that you set aside for us. We thank you for giving it to us. And we know, Lord, it is dedicated correctly. That is the word of truth. And yet we know, in spite of all the correct dedication, if, except we know the truth ourselves and could present it, then the dedication would be in vain and people would be just in their folly. So help us, Lord, to understand the truth as it was given, vindicated in this hour, even as it was in the days of the Apostle Paul and the days of Moses. For, Lord, you spoke to your people, you spoke to your prophets, and you proved that it was you who was doing it. And we thank you. This is this hour repeating itself. We praise you for it. Therefore, Lord, we commend ourselves to truth and trust that you receive us and help us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. Now, of course, we're dealing with the message Easter Seal that Brother Branham preached in <clears throat> 1965 in Phoenix when he was there at the request of Brother Carl Williams, who uh, was the president of the local Full Gospel Businessmen's Association. And we know, of course, that the Full Gospel Businessmen, being Pentecostal, did not endorse Brother Branham, especially on the grounds of his doctrine they did endorse him on the grounds of his ministry, which, of course, is supernatural. <clears throat> we commend them for that, <clears throat> but it's too bad that they did not actually listen to the man because, indeed, he had the word of the Lord for them. Now, this is that sermon in Easter Seal that he preached in Phoenix, and this is number 12 this morning. Now, before we continue because we're going to read and discuss what Brother Branham said. So before we continue, <clears throat> uh, the illustrations which Brother Branham gave us, we just started that last Wednesday night. So before we continue Brother Branham's illustrations of great men of the Bible who we call great because they were quickened to lives of heroic action by the Spirit of God, so before we do that, we want to keep in mind that Brother Branham has emphasized that we are in the hour of the second half of the first resurrection, and we have seen in his ministry the same mighty workings of the Holy Spirit that had been manifested in both the Old and New Testament, making Hebrews 13 and 8 live. <clears throat> and of course, Hebrews 13 and 8 is Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. And as Brother Branham said, if this Jesus is here in the form of a pillar of fire, that's the form of the Holy Ghost in the pillar of fire, uh, he is risen from the dead. He can only prove he's that one by doing the same works in the spirit that he did when he was here in the... And of course, we are well aware of the fact that God always used a prophet. And so Brother Branham would be standing there making his claims, and then making the claim valid that he is Elijah of this hour on the grounds that God would come forth and vindicate his prophets as ever he has done. Now, most people don't even know that God vindicates a prophet, which means that he gives this prophet something which is from God that the people can either take or reject uh, as from God. Now, it's going to be so supernatural that you're going to have to attribute it to somebody. And like the Pharisees, some what Nicodemus said, well, this man's got to be a god. And the high priest said, this man is not of God. So they said, then by whom does this man do these works? This has to be the one from God. 
and is doing the works of God. And they say, nay, but by Beelzebub, that's by the devil, <coughs> he is doing these works. So this is what you're looking at, a man who came on the scene. And uh, now you don't have to take my word for it, but I literally lived with the man for years. I was with him many, many, many times. And I saw so much of his ministry. And uh, know full well whereof I speak, that when this man said, Thus saith the Lord, it never ever failed. So whatever that Lord was behind him was doing these works through him. Now that's all there is to it. It's no different from if you are a man that was sent by a despotic king <clears throat> or like a Joe Stalin. <clears throat> you said, go on down there to uh, Petersburg and you're going to change the name to Leningrad or Stalingrad and you are going to kill these three million people. Well, the guy goes out and kills three million people. On what authority? On the authority of Joe Stalin. Now, it had to be Joe Stalin's signature and Joe Stalin's this and Joe Stalin's that. So we're looking at a prophet. Somebody has to be behind him. Who is behind him? Whoever declares his name is behind him. And he will do what is according to how he has always done it because the Bible distinctly says, I am the Lord, I change not, and neither do my ways. And you'll find that absolutely in the book of Malachi and in the book of Ecclesiastes brought it very clear. Okay, <clears throat> Brother Branham is illustrating the power of the Holy Ghost in men as he takes them from both an Old Testament, which we will soon study. Now, as he is doing it, he is making it very clear to us that he is not merely saying we are living in and by the power of the resurrection. Now remember I brought it up here. Before we continue, Brother Branham's illustrations of great men of the Bible who are called great by us because they were quickened to lives of great heroic action by the Holy Spirit, we want to keep in mind that Brother Branham has emphasized that we are in the hour of the second half of the first resurrection. And we have seen in his ministry the same mighty workings of the Holy Spirit that have been manifested in both Old and New Testament. And this is the vindication we are in this second part of the first resurrection. And as he brings this to us, he is very clear to us that he is not merely saying we are living in and by the power of the resurrection, but that it is actually the hour of the resurrection itself, and the very God that raised Jesus from the dead is here, proving, he is, proving it is he himself, and assuring us that we are actually in the resurrection now. Now, there's a big difference, <clears throat> because you won't find one church that literally claims the name of Jesus Christ, but says we are living in and by the power of the resurrection. But that's been going on for 2,000 years. Now we're talking about being in the resurrection. And we are talking about the one who brings about the resurrection. We are not talking about the baptism with the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> at this particular point, we are talking about we are in the hour of it since Israel is back in the homeland. And remember, though, you talk about 1948, Israel talks, I believe, about 1957, nine years later, <clears throat> they became what we figured they were in 1948. Though in 1917, the Balfour Agreement gave them the possibility and the right to the homeland. And they had to go in and fight for it. And we know Zionism helped give it to them. <clears throat> but I believe it's in 1957 that they made their own declaration. They were unified. And now we're a nation. So now you have, they got their own army, their own money, their own flag, which is the old flag. <clears throat> Six-cornered star David, all of these things. Now, since 
we are looking at this fact of this is the hour of the resurrection. We're going to go to Scripture, and that Scripture is in the book of Ephesians, <clears throat> the first chapter. Now, when you look at this, you go to any commentator you want, and very, very few even say anything about it. Now, remember, in the, at the end of the first chapter, <clears throat> not the end, but verses 13 and 14. After Paul has summed up from eternity to eternity the plan of God when only God was there with his plan to the bringing him these many sons into glory to place them in the new Jerusalem, to give them their inheritance, to be all gathered to one in Christ, which is new Jerusalem, Jesus Christ the Lamb on the throne, the pillar of fire above the throne, the whole earth one landmass, and all those people around, they're bringing their glory in. <clears throat> and there's no need of light and sun and moon because the light of God lightens everything. See? And the earth doesn't necessarily need to be round, though I suppose it is. So, here's what he says in 13, 14, in whom also after that you trusted. You heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which means every single person had a little portion of the life of Christ. <clears throat> and that sealed them in. To what? To every single thing that God had purposed in himself, God was now obligated to fulfill whether he liked it or not. Well, of course he did what he wanted. See? Now watch. Which is the earnest? <clears throat> See? That means the, the assurance, the down payment. This is what you are getting. You are getting a portion. See? Until the redemption of the purchased possession under the praise of his glory. Now let me ask you a question. How long does that go on? It goes on only a specified period of time which must end in your redemption, which means your bodies must be glorified. <clears throat> now, let's keep reading. In other words, it is temporary. Wherefore, I also after heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, Cease not to give thanks to you, making mention in my prayers that our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. <clears throat> now it tells you right there. He is finished concerning the plan of God that takes you right to redemption. So that if you've got that, you don't need to worry, period. You will come out of the ground. But watch it. He says here, now I'm praying that God brings a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Now watch. That the eyes are understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion every name not in this world but the world to come. <clears throat> and hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. It tells you right there that this is something that is going to come. And when it comes, it'll do the same thing for us that it did for Jesus Christ, which is what? Raise him from the dead. Now look. Up here in 13 and 14, you've got the guarantee. The guarantee is a little bit of that Holy Spirit that seals you in and guarantees that you're going to be in the resurrection. Now, how are you going to get in it? This tells you. God's own spirit, which is God himself, is going to come on down here and do this. And when he does, he brings a definitive revelation of himself to all. 
And that definitive revelation has got to be a message. Then what happens? There's got to be a resurrection. Then what happens? There's got to be a rapture to send you up there. That shout, voice, trumpet. Now, what do you want? You say, I'm going to make it without. Go ahead. I'll be looking you at the eye at the white throne. You say, Bail, you're mean. I'm not mean. I just speak the truth. <clears throat> you do what you want about it. Now, this is what the Bible says. It teaches you here that God himself is going to come down and give a revelation of himself. God revealed. You know, bless the Lord, that was done when Jesus Christ was here upon earth. How was it done when he was here upon earth? The Father in me does the works and speaks the words. You think God's going to change? You'll say, bless God, that's my church. You're a liar from the ground up. Your church has produced nothing except bumblebees like you. Now, you and I talk this way. I'm not talking to you people here who's mad at you or anything else. I'm only saying this because I'm looking out in the world and the church out there, not at you. If I believed that about you, I'd quit tomorrow. I'd, quit. I'd walk out the church now and say, eat the ham sandwich or the bologna. Yours. I'm trying to get you to the place where you realize this has to take place. If it hasn't taken place for us, it will yet take place for somebody. <clears throat> Your sealing in guarantees that you will be a part of this if you are standing here on this earth. And if you are not standing here on this earth, you are still guaranteed you will come out of the ground because it says the spirit that raised him is going to raise you. That same spirit changes you and catches us up to be with him seated in not just heavenly places, but reigning and ruling with Christ. See? Now that's what the Bible teaches. <clears throat> you don't take anything less. Don't be foolish this morning and take something less. I haven't got time for that nonsense. <clears throat> now listen. It says the eyes your understanding being enlightened. You may know the hope of his calling, the riches, the glory here in the saints, and the exceeding greatness power to us who believe according to the working of mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him and set him at his own right hand. And that tells you there's something. Now listen, that tells you when the Spirit of God comes here, you will actually be initiated into the kingdom of God's own power which is coming. Huh? You didn't follow me, did you? When this one comes to reveal himself and raises the dead and changes us, at that time, absolutely he will reveal the power of the world to come. Well, it says it, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him, then set him in his own right hand in heavenly places, <clears throat> far above all principality and powers, and those things now, let's turn to the book of Hebrews, the sixth chapter. Paul says we'll go on to perfection if God permit, but God didn't. In verse 4, for it's impossible for those who are once for all enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, having fallen away, they crucified to themselves the Son of God. And that's exactly what Ephesians says. You think there's only one place in the Bible you get a reference? The Bible is full of every single reference. <clears throat> that there is to every doctrine. And the doctrine is that the Lord himself descended from heaven with a message, with the power to raise the dead, to bring the saints together and take them up into a <clears throat> beautiful wedding supper at the rapture and bring them right down here on earth where there is worship and take them to the new Jerusalem. And that power is visible amongst us right at this time. And I have seen it twice when I saw a man fell at my feet dead and brother raised him. And a woman over here in Hartford, Connecticut named Mary fell dead and her spirit was already going out the door. And he said, Mary, come back. And that woman came back from the dead. Two people. <clears throat> 
Absolutely. This man had what no other man had. And why well, you folk not heard of it? Because your church leaders denied it. Blind leaders of the blind. You don't have to sit with the blind leaders. But if you want it, you're going to do it. I'm not here to change anybody. And don't think Lee Vale can. Mm -mm. You say, well, Brother Vale, you, you club the people. And I don't club anybody. I'm just a shouter and a, and a haranguer. But you find me outside this pulpit, I tell you, hey, I tell you what, you better go to that church down the road. I don't think you'll like it here. No, i just be honest with you. If you don't want the word, and that's all I can give you. I'm too old to give anything else. <clears throat> all right. Let's go back here where we're talking. Paragraph 147. Brother Branham is speaking now <clears throat> of these great men in the Bible that they were endued with the Holy Ghost as others were not. <clears throat> these men, these men are leaders, men that God put in position. And so 147th paragraph, look at Elijah. After his work was finished on earth, he was so full of that quickening power, he condemned those Jackie Kennedy haircuts of his day. Now, what was her haircut? She was what they call a waterhead <clears throat> or the Buffon style, the big bubble thing where women would spray their hair and, and they didn't dare uh, have, they slept on special pillows at night so they could be like Jackie. <clears throat> uh, and uh, even cockroaches, I guess, got in. Some of them didn't wash their hair for so long. <laughs> Heard a lot of horrible stories about that. No doubt they're all true. Called them waterhead haircuts. <clears throat> now, why is he after Jackie Kennedy? Because Jack Kennedy is her husband and he is a Roman Catholic. And the Protestants sold out to Catholicism when they voted him in. And when they got him in there, what was he good for? Just the same womanizing tactics. He showed what he was at the Bay of Pigs and everything else. Oh, he was smart. <clears throat> but put it down, as a leader of this nation, he had nothing to give this nation. And this nation showed what it wanted. A Roman Catholic, even the Catholics couldn't stand him. They said, well, they had a chance to vote in Smith years ago. Was he, I think his name was Smith, one of the former Catholic. <clears throat> and uh, they said he couldn't get in because too many Protestants. Now, if we had a man like him, we'd be glad to vote for him. So evidently, the Protestants and the women especially put Kennedy in. Nothing against the man. He was smart enough and all. But when this nation was in dire straits, he was womanizing. Maybe two in bed at one time. No wonder the country's got AIDS. Put it where it belongs. This nation really went downhill. <clears throat> this nation no longer had a testimony. This nation no longer had a right to send out converted people to the heathen countries. What good would it do? <clears throat> no good. They say, well, just a minute, you're a Catholic nation. You've got a Catholic president. What are you, what are you running our pe people down for? And I want to tell you, you read the history now of the Protestants going to these, these Catholic lands. Their converts, my brother, my sister, are not true converts to the word. <clears throat> because the Protestants are no better than the Catholics. No better at all. It's one big melting pot. <clears throat> Heathenism has come into the, into the Protestant church because it always was there over the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost tri trinity. Show me one trinity in the Bible. Show me one word that says eternal son. Sons aren't eternal. They've got beginnings. <clears throat> I don't care if they're the same substance. It makes no difference. So, he said he condemned those, those women of that day. Why? Because she represents the church. Jezebel represents the heathen foreign religion. He told old Jezebel what he thought of her. He told those preachers and priests what was right and what was wrong. Now, this is Elijah back there. They didn't believe him, but he condemned those painted-faced women and things so bad. And he was so full of that quickening power that nothing could harm him. <clears throat> and that was true. In this particular time, the government and everything else was against Elijah. And yet he spoke up without fear. God had fed him from the heavens, took him out and set him aside. He was so full of quickening power when he came to die, the Jordans opened up and he just walked over and God sent down a chariot, took him up home. So full of that quickening power, he became a true, genuine son of God. <clears throat> now, let's look at this. We know positively that Brother Branham 
in using all of these people, speaking of this hour of the second half of the second resurrection, wherein it absolutely says the spirit of revelation and wisdom and the knowledge of him is present by the Holy Ghost himself. In other words, what is he doing? He is thoroughly restoring the truth concerning himself. And what does the Bible say about restoration? Elijah does it. So therefore, Brother Branham is categorically telling us, I am that prophet Elijah, which was for to come. I know people aren't going to take that. How in the world can they take it when eight souls make the ark? If you're going to have millions living that aren't going to die, how in the world can you line up with the Bible that says eight souls saved? Now, you know that doesn't mean just eight people. <clears throat> it tells you a very, very few in number. See? Very, very few are going to be changed at the last day, standing here upon earth and taking away. And yet I pick up periodical after periodical. I've got them home. And these are the guys that are supposed to really know the Bible, Billy Graham and all the rest of them. And oh, they are so amazed. Walvrood, 80 years of age. And he said, he said, I believe I'm going to see the coming of the Lord Jesus in my day. He said, what I'd like to be around for, but I don't want to be around, is see the faces on the, of, the, of the people when all these people are missing. <laughs> How can they read the Bible and say things like that? Yeah. Don't ask me. <clears throat> blind leading the blind. Now listen. He says at this time that Elijah was so full of the glory of God, he became a true, genuine son of God. Now how in the world can you be, become a genuine son of God when you are a genuine son of God? <clears throat> now either you are a seed of God or you are not a seed of God. If you are a seed of God, you will be a wise virgin or a foolish virgin. Now, if you're a serpent seed, you haven't got a prayer. <clears throat> you simply haven't got a prayer. Because the Bible distinctly says, as in Adam all die, in identical manner all are made alive in Jesus Christ. And we know the word of God distinctly says, Jesus himself said, you are of your father the devil. And John pinned it down by saying, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one. And Cain is nowhere in any genealogy concerning Christ. No way. <clears throat> so you got to you make your choice. You say, well, I could be part of one, and at the right time I'll switch over. Well, I tell you, why don't you take a dog goat, or a dog sheep, or whatever, and at the right time, they switch over. Well, I said, let's just pretend we got a, a dog sheep. Now it's breeding season. What are you going to get? Well, I'm going to make sure it'll be a dog, make sure it's going to be a, a sheep. You're crazy. It's going to be dog sheep. <clears throat> it's a mixed, it's a hybridized thing. <clears throat> the human race has become hybridized. And only God can trace the seed down. Only God knows his own because the Bible says he knows his own. And if he puts out the stars and calls them in and calls them all by name, do you think for one single solitary moment he's talking just about stars when there's galaxies out there with trillions of stars? He's talking about his own children. He said, Abraham, he said, your children are going to be like the stars of the heaven and multitude. And he said, also down here is the sand of the sea. <clears throat> So there's no way you can count the children of God. And there's going to be the wise virgin, there's going to be the foolish virgin. Notice the wise virgin, she sits and glows, glories with him in the temple, in the holy city, and the others outside cleaning up the dirt, tilling the ground up. <clears throat> but you can't run one thing about the serpent seed. <clears throat> no way, he goes back to what he was, which he which is an animal, pure and simple, and he's going to be destroyed because God has no place for him. Now this man, Elijah, was a genuine, true son of God. Now notice, a chariot took him home. So full of that quickening power, he became a true, genuine son of God. <clears throat> All right, what's he talking about? <clears throat> In plain English, let's go back to John 1. We'll get the picture. 
Because it's easy Bible to just tell you. John 1, he talks about the Word becoming flesh. In verse 14, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Now you notice in Philippians, he tells you how that came on down. Who being in the form of God, thought it not a prize to be grasped, retained to be with God, but made himself in a reputation, took upon himself the seed of Abraham, <clears throat> the form of a man to die. Now what is this man doing? This man, Elijah, who bypassed his theophonic form, whereas Christ did not, he comes down here upon earth, and he's Elijah the prophet, and now it is time for the rapture. So what is happening? He is taken up in the rapture, and it is absolutely manifest at that time that he is absolutely the, a genuine son of God. Now, what did Brother Branham say about the end time? He said Mount Zion <clears throat> is a showdown. So until the meantime, every single one of us at this particular hour, our weight in hope and considering and counting ourselves believer by believing in the infallible word wherein is true and revealed faith. And there's only one thing going to tell the difference from everybody in this church is, will you be in the rapture? Brother Brown has said the manifested, the manifested sons, <clears throat> he said the, uh, the, the, the reality of it or the, the great scope of it, lies in the resurrection. So it will be on that day when the dead come out of the ground. And I have two quotes against one, that you're going to have to be changed before you see them and recognize them. I'm not going to say the one quote which is a little vague. <clears throat> it does not hold water. I don't know all about this. But I do know this positively that before you're in any kind of a rapture, and I am, you are going to have to be changed. And you will know right then that you are positively that true, genuine son that at this point have faith to believe with you are. As Peter says, having, whom having not seen, you love. And though now you see him not, you still love and believe in him with an unshaken faith. And we have an unshaken faith on the ground that this is right or nothing is right. So I wouldn't go so far as say that, Brother Bill. If that's not right, then something else is. You've got to be sick and say you believe the Bible. No, you don't believe the Bible. You've got your own thoughts up here and your own ideas. <clears throat> because you haven't come to the place where you understand how God does things. See, that's what happened to Israel as they came out of Egypt. The Bible said Moses knew his ways and the people saw his acts. And everybody saw Brother Branham's acts. Oh, great. Oh, great. Oh, great. And went away with their own ideas. You don't go away with your own ideas. You stand to God. You say, well, what man of God? In other words, you say, well, I'm a great man of God. You're a great man of God. Oh, come on. You're about as great as I am, and I'm pretty sick. You're great. <laughs> oh, God have mercy. I don't even want a ham sandwich now. I know just how God feels. He wants to vomit at the end time. <clears throat> Any man says, I've got this and I've got that. Would you recognize the Hope Diamond if you saw it? Now, there's a bigger diamond than the Hope Diamond, but at one time it was the biggest, right? There's a bigger one. I don't, I don't know who's got it, but somebody's got it. Maybe even Elizabeth Taylor's got the Hope Diamond. Who knows? She lives in Hope. <coughs> soap, soap opera stuff. Look, at, if the Hope Diamond was the greatest diamond there is and, and you possessed it, you really know about diamonds. But most of it just have, like my type, you know, like, yeah. It looks, it looks like a diamond, but it's, it's not even, well, it's a zircon. It's a little better than glass. See? Now, I'm talking about God's way of doing things. If you don't know the first thing about genuine diamonds, you get fooled by a piece of glass. And I understand at the end time, I've been told that jewelers have been fooled by zircons. What about the church? When it went off the gospel 2,000 years ago, taking another Jesus, another gospel, another spirit, and they know something? Oh, come on. Well, I studied the Greek. Well, I went to the Louvre and I studied Renoir, but I'm not Renoir. 
I saw Abbott and Costello, maybe every single picture, and laughed my guts out. I'm still not Abbott or Costello. Prophets. <clears throat> now, he said this man was so full of the quickening power that he went into the rapture. It tells you that unless you are full of the Holy Ghost, you will not be in the rapture. Now, how do you know if you're full of the Holy Ghost? <clears throat> how do you know? Well, have you come across this spirit? Has this spirit come into the midst of the church? The spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge in. You say, well, Brother Bailiff's already always been there. You are a liar right there. It hasn't been. Because there hasn't been a resurrection. The proof of that spirit is there will be a resurrection. <clears throat> now, how do you know it's God? He's going to have to do what God's always done in the way he's done it. And you're right back to your prophet. Deuteronomy chapter 18, I can never read it enough and never tell you enough and never listen enough myself as I tell it and read it. <clears throat> and he says over here, verse 15, The Lord thy God will raise up a prophet unto thee from the midst of, thy, of thee of thy brethren, like unto me, unto him you shall hearken, according to all that thou desirest of the Lord thy God in Horeb in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire any more that I die not. And the Lord said, They have well spoken what they spoke. Raise them up a prophet among their brethren. Like unto thee, and put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them with all that I shall command him. It will come to pass, whoever will not hear, hearken unto my words, that he shall speak in my name. I'll require him. And notice that this has to be in his name. Now, we know that this refers implicitly and explicitly to Jesus Christ, but notice it also goes to every other prophet that God is going to use because God himself will not come before the people ever again except in a human form, which is a prophet. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. And if thou say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken, or which the Lord has spoken? When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing fall or not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken, <clears throat> but the prophet spoke it presumptuously, thou shalt not be afraid of him. Now, that prophet can be just a prophet who tells events. You can know positively if the event comes to pass, then God brought it to pass. But I want you to notice over here in Numbers, we go to the 12th chapter of the book of Numbers. <clears throat> and we're going to read something else here. And in verse 5, the Lord came down the pillar of fire, stood at the door of the tabernacle, and called Aaron and Mary, and they came forth. And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision, and speak to him in a dream. Now there you are, that's prophets. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all mine house. With him I will, will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently. I'll, be, I'll make myself visible to him, and not in dark speeches. I won't give him par parables and things like that. And the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. In other words, something will be there he can really recognize. Wherefore then are ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? Now that happened to Moses. It happened in Paul's day and it happened in our day. <clears throat> so there you got it. How am I going to know I'm going to be part of, that res of the resurrection of the rapture? You've got to come to the baptism with the Holy Ghost, which in turn will identify whether you've got the real baptism or not when, when and if that spirit comes in the midst of the church, which you need to get you out of here. So how am I going to, how, how am I going to, how am I going to, how? Oh, don't you understand, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain. Don't you understand the Lord calls the sheep? Don't you know the whole thing is of God? It doesn't have a thing to do with you as though you've got to do something. It means just one thing. Have you got what's in here to see it and receive it?
mad if you don't have that. I'm not mad at anybody any more than I'm mad at myself. It's just out of luck. Jesus said to those scribes and Pharisees, he said, you don't have a place in, your, in, in you for my word. <clears throat> they don't have a place for the word. Well, say, hey, I, I'd like to give you this fruit. I, I don't have any place to carry it. Well, let me see. Maybe we could get something. Now, that's human in, in the world. But you don't do that with God. Because it's got to be from God in the first place. Nature runs true according to species. So does God. Everybody's got this so messed up I don't understand. Dogs get dogs. Pig gets pigs. Horses get horses. Uh, uh, asters get asters. And azaleas get azaleas. And, and this gets that. When it comes to God. Uh, you mean God doesn't have his own children and knows all about it? You mean a penguin is so smart <clears throat> that it knows exactly where, which egg is, is his? And so smart it knows a little baby out of thousands of them, and the little baby knows mama penguin? And when it comes to God, <clears throat> the old prophet, <clears throat> given the words of God, he said, my people, my people, I don't understand, he said, what's going on? Since this is like God talking like a man. He said the fowls in the air, he said they know their place. <clears throat> he said the, the oxen knows his master's crib, but my people. And then he said, I call them, but he said, they are not my people. Now what's the test back in the days of Isaiah? All God's children are taught of God. And in the end time, there is the definitive revelation who and what is God and what is he doing? How is he doing it and how it affects us? It says right here in the book of Ephesians. Then why aren't they listening? They're not listening. They're not going to listen either. <clears throat> listen, I picked up all the books on these guys. All right, let's go on further. 149. Notice he had a successor and his name was Elisha. Now right there, of course, is where everybody's going to start and go, I'm Brother Branham's successor. I'm a successor. I'm a successor. <clears throat> oh, hogwash, he's talking about Elijah. Now, let's understand something. And let's get this flat. The Elijah at the end time that appears to restore the word is so different from the Elijah, the original, and from number two, and from number three, and it comes to number four, and number four is always deliverance. Now, deliverance to the Christian. God, get me out of here. No, Lord, it's not that I want to die. I'm tired of this stinking flesh and all these troubles. Can't I get somewhere where the cry in my heart is to be fully reciprocal to what's calling me? Right? That's exactly true. Number four is deliverance. Number four is Israel coming out of Egypt. <clears throat> so now, the successor was Elisha, and he did double the miracles. But remember Elijah. Elijah was not a word prophet. He was not a word prophet. He never brought a word. In other words, he never brought the doctrine. He absolutely was one who revealed the word. And his signs and wonders and power gave him the authority to do so. <clears throat> right? And he dealt with those poor people and they stayed right in Israel. And finally, everybody went into bondage. <clears throat> now, you come to John the Baptist. He was Elijah number three. He didn't do any miracles at all. He merely pointed to Jesus who came on the scene and vindicated him. And Jesus came and brought a word. And when he brought a word, he spoke of those things of himself within the word and showed that he was that one and they crucified him. <clears throat> now, Paul comes on the scene and he is not Elijah. He is another Moses, absolutely in the sense that the pillar of fire comes to him and talks face to face. And he brings a complete revelation based upon the scripture that says the children of Abraham amongst tiles would also come in. 
<clears throat> so he brings the, the absolute definitive scripture concerning the sacrifices which are now laid aside in Israel coming to Jesus Christ our Lord and he brings the fullness of the true gospel of that particular hour. <clears throat> Now, Paul the Apostle said, I have espoused you to Christ as a true virgin, but I fear lest as the tempter tempted Eve, so your minds will be tempted and seduced, and you will believe then another Jesus, another spirit, another gospel. <clears throat> now, watch what, Paul, what the book of Acts says in chapter 3. He says in verse 19, when the times are refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. That means an actual revival sent by God from his presence, God being present. <clears throat> He's going to send a revival. So you've got a word here that there's a great revival coming like a breath of fresh air. Something is coming to do something to the people. Now notice, even he shall send Jesus Christ which was before preached unto you. So you know that Christ is going to have to come pretty soon after that. But watch, whom the heavens must retain until the restitution or, re or the restoration of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Now this tells you that this man is simply going to restore what's already there. So he's not going to come <clears throat> vindicated to bring the word like Moses and vindicated to bring the word <clears throat> like the apostle Paul. No way. He's vindicated to restore. Now watch. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you, of your brethren like unto me. Him you'll hear in all things whatsoever he shall send you. It'll come to pass that every soul which shall not hear that prophet shall be destroyed the people. That never happened when Jesus was upon earth. You better believe it wasn't. <clears throat> no way, shape, and form. They got away. Now watch. Yea, and all the prophets from Samuel. Now there's your key verse. See? Your key verse. <clears throat> Samuel never did bring the word. He was not a word prophet. He received visions and everything else was a truly certified prophet. But he did not bring the word. He interpreted the word to the people the same as Elijah did. And every time those men came on the scene, there was a change, there was judgment. It says starting with Samuel. How many times has Brother Branham referred himself to Samuel? When did I ever take your money? When did I ever tell you what that was, that was wrong? <clears throat> he always lined himself with Samuel. So did Elijah. See, watch your differences in your scripture. There's a big difference. That's why Brother Branham said, just think the same pillar of fire. How wonderful. Just think the same pillar of fire that brought the word to Paul is here revealing it. <clears throat> it can't be another word. It's got to be the same word. See, now listen. A prophet shall the Lord your God raise unto you. Of your brethren, him you'll hear in all things, whatever he will say unto you. Now, let's go back to Hebrews, the 12th chapter. <clears throat> you're approaching unto not, it says in verse 18, you're not coming to Mount Zion, but over here in 21, you are coming, to, I mean, beg your pardon, Mount Sinai in verse 18, but in verse 21, you're coming to Mount Zion. <clears throat> you're coming to the rapture, unto New Jerusalem, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn. You're coming to it. You're coming to, this, to the first half of the first resurrected people. They're waiting for you. <clears throat> we as the second half are coming to them. We are not going to Mount Sinai for the law which is against us. We are coming here for grace to receive our inheritance. Now watch what it says. And to, <clears throat> and to, which are written, and to the general assembly church of the firstborn which are written in heaven. And to God the judge of all. And to the spirits of just men made perfect. It tells you the judge descends. <clears throat> At the time of the rapture, the judge descends. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 12. James 5. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, to the blood of spring to speak of better things of Abel, see that you refuse not him that speaketh. What are they talking about? They're talking about this Jesus speaking. 
So therefore, God raises up Christ Jesus in the midst of us in the form of the Holy Ghost <clears throat> because that's the real Jesus. Never mind the body. That was just the body. <clears throat> Let's talk about the one who was pre-existent way back there at the Father said, Restore to me the glory. <clears throat> the same one that says, I am Jesus, which is, which is Joshua, which means Jehovah Savior. <clears throat> God in Christ reconciling. God in him coming right down here in this present hour and present age. And he says right here, you hear him and those that don't are destroyed and every single person according to Malachi 4 is destroyed except those of us who fear his name and unto us he arises with healing in his wings. Now you do what you want about the scripture. This is laid out here. By vindicate, they'll vindicate. Don't think I'm being fooly on that. I'm no more vindicating nothing. <clears throat> but I'm standing on vindication. So you bet. Now listen, right here positively, there is no such thing as a successor, Elisha, to William Branham, <clears throat> who was the successor of Elijah in the days of John. Jesus was. Now, let's go a little further. <clears throat> Remember, that was in Exodus when Jesus brought the first few out of the bondage of the law. Right? Absolutely. <clears throat> Now, at the end time, we're coming out of the bondage of organization, Rome and all the rest of the world churches. We're coming into the light. <clears throat> now, the point is, who is the one that is there? Elijah is there. That is absolutely true. Now, when Moses was gone, who took them in? Joshua took them in. Then Say, okay, if there's no Elisha, there's going to be a Joshua follow Brother Brown. Absolutely correct. And he said, our Joshua is the Holy Spirit himself. For the pillar of fire is here to lead us into the millennium. <clears throat> so you see how this lines up. And he said, notice he had a successor, and he was Elisha. The successor of William Branham is the Holy Ghost because he said, I must decrease and he must increase. And he said, I'm laying a foundation for the coming one, but if that's a man, then I was not that prophet. <clears throat> oh, I get my phone calls. You and Brother Branham told me, he said, Lee, he said, the closest thing to this message, the closest to truth is the latter rain. And he told everybody, he didn't say that on the tape to my knowledge, but he did say this to every single one of you on the tape, and he said the greatest lie in all the world is 99% truth. So I get my phone call, my phone call, latter ray friend from years back, and they're saying, yes, I know he is here. Yeah. <clears throat> A lot of people don't dare say that. I got absolute in proof in writing that, that Douglas McHugh's out there in Arizona believes it, and the last I heard is he's preaching it. Thank God. <clears throat> Should have been preaching all these years, same as I've been doing it. <clears throat> they cannot see it. <clears throat> they positively do not want these things. <clears throat> but that, of course, is their business if they do not want it. <clears throat> so, you talk about successors and a double portion. And this is what the Pentecostals are talking about right now. <clears throat> the latter rainers, they are talking about this great thing coming. And you listen to them talk and they arrogate to themselves the great thing that Brother Branham said. I've seen positive idiots and kooks do that and I sit right across the table and do it. <laughs> Talking to me when I knew Brother Branham, knew all the other guys around him, come on, you talk to some other kids. I'm 77 years old this September. I've been around a bit, kid. I know the Oral Roberts and the Clifton <clears throat> uh, uh, Ericsons and the all, you name it, I knew them. From little tiny boys to the big shots. And I got one word for you. Compared to Brother Branham, zilch. Not just zilch, but minus. Because they will not take up the challenge of truth. They wouldn't do it. <clears throat> so, there will not be a successor to William Branham except the Holy Spirit himself. Now, notice he had a double portion of it. <clears throat> now, he's using this illustration, of course, again. So, this day, 
in that day in a comparison. In that day, <clears throat> Elijah died about 80 years of age. He took sick and died. No, he didn't go home like Elijah. Certainly not. <clears throat> he did not. Now, I want you to notice something. No matter how many miracles that Elisha did, he was not Elijah. It was merely the Spirit upon him. Same Spirit. In other words, God always takes his man, but he leaves the Spirit <clears throat> in continuation. And this is known as attrition. The rank isn't filled up. It just keeps moving on till the last one's gone. <clears throat> All right. Now he says he didn't go home like Elijah. Both of them repre are represented in the church. Some saints go, some are resting. But notice, when Elijah was taken up in the rapture, he went to sleep but full of quickening power. In other words, one went up full of quickening power, one went down full of quickening power. What's the difference? He got quickening power. <clears throat> See, that's a big thing right there. Look at this, his prophecy just before he died. Now, let me show you something. I don't care if you are dead or where you're at. That quickening power never leaves you. Who's you? <clears throat> my ears, my nose. <clears throat> my face, my hands. What did you get from God? I got a soul, and that gene in there was from God. <clears throat> and the soul in the womb, due to the law of reproduction, built your soul a house commensurate and commensurate under the conditions today which are horrible you got problems as that baby dropped from the womb what happened a spirit was there waiting to take it <clears throat> and enter it which it did so therefore who is the real you not the spirit, not the body, the gene with the RNA and the DNA. <clears throat> that soul, that inner soul, because it's different from the souls of animals. It's an inner soul. So the real you is this, <clears throat> that the Holy Spirit got down there and united you back to God. And now you're on a new journey where you're serving God and living for Him until the day He takes you. But I'm going to tell you something. If that life has anointed that life that God gave you, in other words, it's just like the male and female cell coming together, but don't please ever try to say, I say male and female, like some guys are. It's strictly male, male coming to male, but it's like. <clears throat> In other words, <clears throat> you receive now what you didn't have before, which was a quickening power from your position of being lost, child of God, to a now renewed, <clears throat> sitting in heavenly places, child of God. <clears throat> now, if you have that, you are now open in the end time to Ephesians when the Spirit himself comes down in the church to raise the dead. <clears throat> so therefore, if you've been quickened, God, and that quickening unto God is back to his word, which is the evidence of your baptism, you have the word for the hour. That will never, ever leave you, period. It guarantees you that you will never miss anything of the word of God. Now, you notice something the foolish virgin, they do. <clears throat> they don't have the baptism. So they miss understanding the Holy Spirit himself coming down in this hour, and they miss immortality standing here in the flesh they miss the first resurrection. They come up in the second resurrection. They miss standing in the judgment or standing there clear because nothing can touch them. And they go through the judgment and says, you did this, this, and this. Come on in. You follow him saying? Shake your heads one way or the other. You get it? Okay, good. <clears throat> because this is what you need to know. Because the prophet taught it. 
Now, I don't care if you're dead where you're at. Quickening power never leaves you. Years after he's dead, he'd rotted away, skin worms eating it up. They were packing a dead man one day, threw him in on those bones, threw him in the cave. And there was so much quickening power there until the man came back to life again. Hallelujah. Raised him up from the dead because that quickening power that was upon that saint of God never left him. <clears throat> Stayed right there on those bones. <clears throat> you know, somebody tried to dig up Brother Branham, I think, for that very reason. I don't think it would have worked. It could have worked on the same grounds that faith works. But why would you need to dig up a man's bones when he's been vindicated to God and you saw him hundreds of times, perhaps? <clears throat> was in his meetings. Knew the truth about it all. Why, would, why do you want to go beyond it? That's like proving the brain theorem all over and over again. That's why when you go to school and, <clears throat> and you do geometry and you get those theorems, the teacher doesn't say, now, before you solve this question, please go through all these theorems and solve them. That's stupid. Once you learn the theorems, the problems come, you apply the theorems. <clears throat> sure, that's all there is to it. So there you stand as mathematics, and mathematics cannot lie because one and one will always make two. Otherwise, why has God gotten his book? <clears throat> you don't fool with principle. They all come out of God. Look at Romans 8, chapter, verse 11, about this business Brother Bannon just said about the quickening in you. Romans 8 and 11. And he said here, the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. Watch. He that raised up Christ from the dead will quicken you. That's what it says in Ephesians. You that are born again, full of the Holy Ghost, are quickening material. And when the one that quickens you comes back here, he will now change your bodies. And you're supposed to know. Well, Brother Bill, how are we going to know? See, there you are. Go to your Bible. Prophet. Well, there aren't any prophets. Who said so? Well, um, well, um, well, um. I'm not going to agree with you, well, well, well. My Bible never said there weren't prophets. What about Elijah come back? Well, uh, um, that's to the Jews. Prove it. Well, on the other hand, they can say to me, prove it. Ha, ha, gotcha. Vindicated prophet. Well, I can't take that. Never asked you to. I'm just standing on it. You, I don't ask anybody to take what I got. Hey, years ago, I persuaded a guy my way. Oh, God. I blew him out of the water. I wish I'd have kept him there. No, 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 no. I preach hard and rough and tough. I admit I try to give a mindset. Why? Because Paul gave mindsets. Every church out there gives mindsets. The way gives a mindset, and then some do-gooder come by and get him out of the mindset. Dr. Moon's Universal Church gives a mindset, and they come by to get him out of the mindset. And, they, and, they, and these goof-offs, <clears throat> these uh, Latter-day Saints, Joe Smith came back with, no, it's a bunch of crud. People try to get them out. Oh, it's okay if you do it, but if I do it, no, no. Well, I got news for you. I'm honest. I'm upright. I don't lie. I don't go behind people's backs. I try to give a mindset concerning what this man said because I want that mindset and you sit here trying to get it. Amen. You, you, know what, you know what's going on in the world? I'm just giving an illustration. You, you can't win. You can't. You cannot. Listen. The whole world is in the lap of the wicked one and it's a battle for the minds. Now, God knows I don't want your minds. Oh, yo, yo. Some of your minds are goofier than mine. God had pity. <laughs> and I'm having a job with mine. Why would I want yours? Whew. But if we could, by the grace of God, have a man come here and give us all the same mindset, we'd be a Because his mindset was toward God and toward grace and for good. 
and he didn't care two bits for organization. Fought it to a standstill. I never could understand why organization hated me. It's the same women. God knows I, th well, never mind that. Just leave it. <clears throat> 152 paragraph. Oh, remember we are of his flesh, bone of his bone, if we are his bride. Oh, remember we are flesh of his flesh, bone of his bone, if we are his bride. Now, what does that tell us? It's the becoming. We've got everything right now, even though we have bodies that are deteriorating, bodies of flesh and all, we have exactly what God wanted for us, and we're coming up, 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 until we get immortal bodies. <clears throat> so listen to me. If we are going to be changed like unto his own glorious body and look on himself, our form, then we are bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh in the full potential. And if it's the full potential, it's going to be. You know, I put a little egg under a chicken. And hey, that's the cutest little chicky ever came out. And I put a duck egg under my chicken. And that's a cute little duck came out. And I put a little snake under my chicken. And a snake came out and bit the chicken. What am I trying to tell you? Hey, look, at the full potential lies in whatever's there in the beginning. <clears throat> Why? Because that's where it came from. Then if you came from him, bypassed that spirit body, and you came a human body, he took on the spirit body, later this side took on a physical body, and we're going to be absolutely then like him in the resurrection. Then we are already like him potentially. Because all we did was miss the one in the first place. Hey, look, if you miss the first breakfast call at 6 o'clock, and you're able to get a second call at 8 o'clock, you may have your stomach rumbling and you may feel like you're going to starve to death but at 8 o'clock the dinner bell rings the breakfast bell rings that's the way we are we missed the 6 o'clock call we're going to get the 8 o'clock call what's the difference? well you say it would have been nice to, to get the other I've got news for you if you'd have got the first one the second one wouldn't be so good. Try it. Now, nobody's going to be happy to miss the first one. I'm a diagonal hypocrite up here if I told you, hey, I'm so happy I missed the first one. But there's a day coming when I will be. I can look back on my life even now, and I can say, hey, boy, you never had a tough one. Man, are you lucky? Man, you got her, you got really got it made for how the grace of God was good to you. You met the prophet, and you got lovely people around you, beautiful people to preach to, and you got it so good when man alive, that's marvelous. And that's in my saner moments. In my insane moments, I say, Well, boy, she's sure tough. What's it a few aches and pains in the hands? <clears throat> you know, it's when your hair starts to ache is when you got trouble. <laughs> that hasn't happened to anybody yet. <clears throat> so thank God. Listen, bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh, because we're bride. That's what he said in Ephesians 30. <clears throat> Let's go there. Ephesians 30. I was going to try to finish this whole series in June, but thank God it didn't say what year. <laughs> it's going to be going to be tough on all of us. Uh, five and uh, oh no, I can't get that in Galatians. Here it's in Ephesians. Galatians, Ephesians, the fifth chapter. For we are members of his body. That's it. <clears throat> members of his body. <clears throat> See? Then if we're members of his body, we've got to be what he is, which is word. And word becomes. The word become flesh. So we're the becoming people, like I preached on in Houston. Death won't bother, that is, effect or hinder, that quickening power at all. No, certainly not. <clears throat> Why? Because the promise is unto immortality no matter where you are or in what shape or at what time. Those skin worms destroy this body. In my prayer to God, glory to God, caught up. <clears throat> now, you are not going to be affected by anything at all 
you are going to get this change because this is the way the resurrection comes. It has been promised. <clears throat> now remember, God being a savior, he had to predestinate a man who would require salvation in order to give himself reason and purpose of being. God being a resurrection and resurrector. He had to have a people that he could resurrect. <clears throat> so, the point is, not you or I desiring something. It is the fact that God said so. Right? So therefore, whether man likes it or not, <clears throat> you're going to be in resurrection. Be born. Nobody asked to die. Nobody asked for resurrection. You're going to get it. Now what does he say? 1 Corinthians 15 on the resurrection. Verse 51, Behold, I show you mystery, we'll not all die, we'll all be changed. The moment we die at the last trump, come to sound, the dead in Christ be raised here in a couple, we shall all be changed. <clears throat> there you are. What is the big thing we're looking for? Change. Change. Hey, you know something? Would life be anything but fantastic if we just had different bodies under different conditions? So, wow, I'd go for that in 15 seconds. Hey, one day in a 15 seconds, you got it. That's all that's missing. Garden of Eden, here we come. Oh, my. That's what you're looking for. And you're looking, be now listen, at this time, you're guaranteed something way beyond that. New Jerusalem. Oh, my. See? And here it says here, don't worry. No problem. It's in the book. You're going to get it. First Thessalonians. <clears throat> Watch what Paul says here. Verse 13. I wouldn't have you ignorant brethren and fussing and fuming and wondering concerning them which are asleep that you saw or not, even as those that have no hope. In other words, you're wondering about things. You're wondering about them. Oh, where's it going to happen? Oh, can it really happen? All these things. Is it really true? Now listen, if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and remember Paul proved it by vindication, the same as William Branham, even so them also which are asleep in Jesus will God bring forth with him at the great wedding supper. For this we say by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain shall not, uh, under the coming of the Lord, shall in no way take precedence <clears throat> over them which are asleep. In other words, as Brother Brown said, it doesn't matter two bits if you're dead or you're alive. If you're in it, you're in it. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. God himself is going to see to it. So, hey, well, you know, I, I just wonder about the resurrection. I just this, I just that. He said, hey, it's out of your hands. God is going to come down with a message, revealing himself, vindicating himself. The mighty power of the resurrection <clears throat> that joined you to him, the resurrector himself in your midst with his word, of revelation, burning himself, raising the dead, changing you and taking you up. Now, brother, sister, that's exactly what Brother Branham preached in the rapture. But you know, you won't see it unless you believe it. If you believe it, you made it. You know why? Because billions out there don't believe it. They don't want it. The nice people don't want it. The full of the Holy Ghost so-called people don't want it. I preach the presence. There's a brother sitting right here today whose preacher will not preach the presence. <clears throat> the so-called big shot in this movement. He's supposed to have perfect discernment. How can he de can't discern the spirit of the word? Oh, brother Vale's wrong because the reputable preachers don't go along with it. You tell me William Branham was that prophet of God and denying Ephesians 1.17, which he never actually pointed to. It's over there in, in the, in the uh, D D uh, Daniel 70th week, and not one time does he mention it. <clears throat> he just tells about it. 
But I knew where it was because God showed me. That doesn't make me anything big, but it just lets you know that, hey, I believe what the prophet said because I can find it. Are you going to tell me the Lord himself didn't come down while we meet the Lord in the air? As the Lord said, sit down in my right hand, tell him make the enemies thy footstool. Who are we going to meet? Jesus. Flesh. <laughs> when he incarnates himself. I don't understand people fighting this. <clears throat> Let them fight. They're fighting a hopeless cause because the Lord has descended. Or oh, what's that picture? Then that's a lie too. He hasn't come according to 2 Thessalonians, the second, first chapter 7 today. I just say one thing. If William Branham was a deceiver, he was the lousiest, stinking, rotten, poor, stout deceiver I ever saw because fully, he ain't deceived nobody. How did six billion people, how many believe? Come on. Come on, I could take and have a con game right here and get a better percentage. Let's try. I don't know what to do, but I could think of something. <laughs> and I could be better con artist than William Brennan. You see what I mean? People. Now, listen. Glory to God caught up. What a hope for an old man like me. My end time right out yonder soon at 56 years of age. He already knew he was going to go off the scene. <clears throat> you see, I don't think he did. You're wrong. He did. I had a dream about it, too, and I didn't believe it myself. First pa paragraph, 153, ever what time we got? I'm tired. Are you tired? <laughs> what it is, I'm hot in here. It's time to quit. Been a good people, good, 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 good congregation. Good congregation. Love you all. Uh, we'll be back, if not this Wednesday. All depends how much I can take. <clears throat> and... Uh, Good ham sandwiches out there, salad ham. And for you who are so fussy that you can't eat that, we will give you a little bit of turkey salad sandwich. And you that don't like foam cups to drink coffee out of, you're stuck. Because nobody, but nobody's going to get anything that's like usual. But it's for any, it's for us to have a little fellowship for the kids. It's like a, like a Sunday, um, ice cream festival there's going to be sherbet out there for you and ice cream and things and we didn't have the time to prepare fresh fruit but we got canned fruit and the bananas in it and you can have dollops of ice cream there's nuts out there after dinner mint and you know how it is we love you desperately uh that's right <laughs> heavenly father we thank you for your love and goodness to us lord that we can come together here and see what was brought to us by a prophet, Lord. And we know he's vindicated. We don't make, mean to make light of things, Father, but we do have a good Mary spirit within us concerning this, O oh God, knowing that something happened in our day that was so utterly unusual, so with the word of God, absolutely pointing to Christ, knowing, Lord, that soon down the road there could be lying signs and wonders pointing to the queen of the heavens, so-called. What a degradation of the lovely Mary. And uh, all these things, Lord, that the Antichrist will perpetrate upon the earth. But as Daniel said, the wise will not be in any form of ignorance. They'll know what's going on. For the true wisdom shall increase, while the worldly knowledge will increase. True wisdom will increase. And we know, Lord, it's right in this hour. We believe that absolutely by vindication. Again, Father God, we just thank you that Brother Brown has said in that sweet spirit of Christ in our midst, which it is now, the gifts of the Spirit, as it were, on the shelf, the sick amongst us heal. We pray for our brother this morning, Lord, that has the particular problem <clears throat> in his body. But we know, Lord, that you can and do touch our brother more at this time, Father. May he be well, because your spirit is here, and it's a sweet spirit amongst the people, Lord talking to the sweet spirit of Christ within the people. And you're our healer. We lifted you up, not only seeing you crucified, but seeing you risen from the dead with the quickening power in our midst. Father God, I believe this morning that people are being touched, and I look for a touch more and more every day until why we just walk right into immortality. How are you got a plan? That's the way we want it. Now, Father, dismiss us. We go about a little bit of 
fellowship and eating together. May it be a blessed time. May especially children be very, very happy, all those amongst us. And may we grow in grace, knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and come again to grow even more and more to feed at your table. Forgive us every one of our sins. Put a new spirit, as it were, within us, a renewed spirit, a greater spirit of love and understanding and peace, tranquility, faith in God, and uh, quietness of heart, moderation. There might be a testimony unto Christ in this place, our working places, wherever we are, in our homes, whatever. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Take the name of Jesus.